real Josh, quick, how are you? I'm good. I just want to say real quick that uh, Trey, Trey Sermon got here four weeks ago, broke one record, and now Jerry Umig just basically forgot who I was. So I just had to, had to throw that out there. Trey is now Jerry's favorite player. Um, it's no longer me. Sorry about that, Bill. I just had to get that off my chest. That's all right, Mike. Um, <laughs> uh, you guys have said, uh, Ryan Day has said that um, you guys haven't played your best game yet. That, you know, yeah, obviously in sport, sports you've played well, but not entirely. How much do you think of that is because the season's had no rhythm, that you've been on again, off again, and the fact that you haven't played a team until now where you can get – until now you could get away with not playing your best. Do you yeah. think that you guys – you know, how much is there to that, that you – think you can play your best because you're going to have to play your best. Yeah, I think that's that's a big part of it. You're right. There hasn't been any rhythm to anything we've done this season. Um, you know, we've just – we've been, you know, taking hits one right after another, whether it be games getting canceled or players having to sit out. Um, and it's just been a really weird year, no doubt about it. Um, and that, I think that plays a, a big part in it, that there's – there's just no rhythm to it, you know, and when it's in a season, you, you get so used to the weekly routine always being the same over and over. And it, it just carries over into everything. I, my week, like last season, my weeks never changed. Like what I did during the week, exactly the same every week to a T. So yeah, that's, that's, I think that's a big part of it. And then also the aspect of, of we could, you know, the teams that we've played to this point, we could get by without playing, you know, four quarters of really good football. We'll go to Nathan Baird from cleveland.com. Hey, Josh, uh, just curious, but yourself um, and, and maybe other players on the team, I guess you can speak for yourself, just kind of what, what you think this game means for Justin Fields. Um, obviously quarterbacks get a, a lot of credit, but there's also a lot of pressure on their shoulders and just, how, how much there is on him to perform well and, and kind of rise to the occasion in a game like this? Yeah, there's, there's no doubt a lot of pressure uh, on Justin's shoulders in a game like this. Um, but to be fair, um, there's a lot of pressure on Justin's shoulders every game. You know, I mean, even you go back to last season and how many big games we played in then and into this year. I mean, there's, there's always a lot of pressure um, especially on Ohio State quarterbacks through the years. Um, if you look back, there's always been a lot of pressure on them. And, and I honestly believe Justin is someone who's built to handle that pressure. Um, so I think, you know, I think he'll do great, obviously. Next question will be Rod Walker from the New Orleans Advocate. Hey, Josh, um, Wyatt was named first team All-American um, today, but what's it just sort of been like lining up beside him and, you know, maybe what's something you've learned from him and what's he been like as a teammate? Yeah, he's been he's been a great teammate. Me and me and Wyatt are obviously super close and we've played together um, really right next to each other the last four seasons. Um, and it's I've gotten lucky, man. I lucked out. I mean, he's he's an incredible football player, really smart um, and works really hard. Man, I've, me and him have gelled big time. So it's been. It's been awesome getting to play next to him. I'm going to, I'm going to miss it, um, no doubt about it. We'll go to Joey Kaufman from Columbus Dispatch. Josh, if this was a typical season, you guys would be uh, headed to the bowl game, Sugar Bowl in New Orleans a few days ahead of time and, and probably do some, some various festivities around the game. That's been the case, Fiesta Bowl, Rose Bowl, Pass Bowl experiences. What, is it, what has it been like not having that this year? Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. Um, you know, it's such a shame because anytime we go as a team out to both sides, we just have so much fun. Um, it, it's one of my favorite weeks of the year every year. I mean, as a team, we just have a blast. Um, so it's, it's super disappointing that we don't get to this year. Um, you know, we've really, it, it, the turnaround was so fast. It almost doesn't even feel like a bowl game, to be honest. You know, usually, I don't know how many days we had in between the Big Ten Championship and the Fiesta Bowl last year. I think it was like 17 or something like that, 18. Um, I don't know. The, the turnaround just seems quicker. It doesn't, it doesn't feel real, but neither does anything that's happened to this year, right? I mean, it's been, it's been crazy. So, yeah, it's, it's a shame we're missing out on that because, um, 
we always just have so much fun. Next will be Andrea Adelson from the ACC Network. Josh, I know you told me back in August that um, this was the game that you all targeted uh, to have this rematch because of what happened last year. Um, what is it like now that it's here, given all the adversity you guys have faced and you just talked about pressure? Do you feel like your team feels pressure um, because of what happened last year and wanting to get payback, so to speak? Yeah, it, uh, this is exactly, you know, this is exactly where we wanted to be. Um, you know, it's no secret that, that we wanted to win that game really badly last year. And it was, it was extremely rough the way that, uh, the way that we left that field. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely, definitely good to be, to be back in this position. And this is, you know, this is where we wanted to be and, and, Thank God we're here after the, the crazy year we've had. Um, and I think we're just excited to get another shot at him. Next is Steve Hellwagen from Bucknuts Media. Hey, Josh. I uh, wanted to ask you, last year in this game, you guys struggled inside the 20-yard line, had those three field goals first half, and then Northwestern uh, last week, kind of the same thing inside the 30 were some problems just – have you guys pinpointed maybe what was going on in there? I know you go back to that game last year. They missed a pass interference call in the end zone that hurt you guys, and J.K. dropped a pass, But which, you know, those plays go either way. But just what, what's your thought maybe about what can be done? Yeah, um, I, think it's, I think it's all little things, honestly. The, the intensity of, of de defenses get intensified in the red zone. Obviously, there's like an extra defender there. Um, with the back of the end zone being there. And so defenses definitely can, can buckle down and make stops in that situation. And as a team that just leaves our offense with, uh, you know, no, no room for error basically. Um, and it was, it was always I, like when you watched the last year, it was always little things, right? JK on that touchdown catch, um, you know, the, like you said, right across that, that play across the back of the end zone with the pass interference, but our protection could have been better, right? There was someone right in his face. We should have been better on that. Um, and, and maybe Justin makes that throw if that doesn't happen. Um, so there's, there, there's all kinds of things that, that happen down there that are extreme. They may seem extremely little, but in, in the long run, it's the difference between field goals and touchdowns. We'll go to Ralph Russo from the Associated Press. Hey Josh, so after a game in a normal season, I'm sure you get together with your family, celebrate, get together with your f friends a little bit and celebrate. What has it been like this year? What, I mean, what's a, what's a post-game celebration like for Josh Myers after in COVID world? Yeah, it, uh, one of my favorite things about games is, is getting to see my family afterwards and talk to them. And it's, it's extremely disappointing that it's, not something that I could do this year. Um, so they, they still always go to every game that they're allowed to go to, uh, depending on where we play. Um, and I always, I FaceTime them on the bus or on my way, you know, back to my house if we had a home game. Um, so I, I still talk to them, but, but that's my way of, of, of getting to spend time with them in that, in that amount of time. Cause that, that, that time is really special to me. I don't get to see my family very often as is. Um, and it's, it's a shame that it's the way it is, but nothing we can do about it. And so I just try and try and talk to him as much as I can when I can. Time for one final question from Dennis Dodd from CBS Sports. Josh, I wonder if you'd kind of relive one more time the circumstances and how hard that was with uh, battling through COVID. Um, when I had it? Yeah. 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 Uh, it was, it was terrible. Um, I'm not gonna, not gonna sugarcoat it for, for you. Um, I, I tested positive and I, I, you know, left my house immediately, um, and had to go quarantine for 10 days. Didn't see anyone for 10 days. Um, you know, just, I mean, I sat there, I had, thank God I had some schoolwork <clears throat> for me to do. Um, and, and to finish up on some finals, uh, at least those first couple of days. So I didn't completely lose my mind then, but boy, towards the end of it, I mean, I was watching 
I was watching film on Michigan State constantly, just trying to, you know, help the guys. I, would, I just I – I had nothing else to do. Um, you know, texting, texting all the guys who started that week and, you know, sending them stuff and trying to, trying to be a part of it as much as I could. Cause man, I was, I was sick, not getting, you know, not, not to be able to be there. You know, one of my, another thing too, like Max Ray is, is one of my best friends and, you know, him getting his first start. That's something I would have loved to have been there. I, I, I can't even express how badly I wish I could have been there for, for that. So I could see him do it in person. Um, it was hard. It was hard to just sit there and, and not be able to be a part of it, but I got through it. So here we are, right? What, was there a dorm that they put you in, or what? How, what was the isolation like? Um, I had I had a, a separate a separate place to stay from from. It's a hotel, but um, I, I did not stay in a hotel. I stayed in a in a separate building in the middle of nowhere, a cabin. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Be sure to click on that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. Come visit us over at BuckeyeGrove.com for all the best Ohio State information on the web.